Okay, in the next step, we'll try to get into the nitty gritty details of the FMEA and actually understand it. Again, this is um, this is always like very complex, and there are always uh, like a thousand questions about this. So I hope that maybe you only have like two hundred questions after this, and then maybe this helped you a bit. So what we did just now is we created this PHA table where we did a preliminary hazard analysis, um, what could go wrong. And we didn't quite understand why we did this, but we will be linking it up with hazard IDs on the right side. And before we do that, we will actually look at our simple risk table and try to migrate that to the more complex risk table, which is the FMEA. Sorry, the FMEA hazards table, actually this one. Let's move this to the left. Okay. The 14971 actually has like multiple terms and these the three terms I mentioned earlier, hazard, hazardous situation and harm are the relevant, relevant ones here. And to quickly define it in kind of, kind of normal human words, hazard is something which like possibly could be dangerous, but it doesn't really mean you're affected by it. Um, hazardous situation is actually you are kind of in the vicinity of this and it could affect you and harm is actually like you have medical harm so like and like an interesting example for our application could be okay maybe a hazard is there's actually a wrong COVID diagnosis so let's let's put this here okay a hazard is like a wrong COVID diagnosis a wrong COVID diagnosis in our app and just to refresh your memory our app is like this magic COVID diagnosis app where you like take a picture of someone or do something else magically and it it says it says like yeah this person is COVID positive or negative and a wrong diagnosis in this app in itself hasn't inflicted any harm yet right because like I could have a wrong diagnosis um, displayed and then I could be like not looking at my phone and just like I don't know putting my phone in my pocket and going about my normal life so um, this by itself hasn't caused me any medical harm but the hazardous situation could be something where I am suddenly um, affected by this and it could be causing me harm. So in the hazardous situation, of course, it would require me to actually read the text on the app. Um, and more importantly, it would also require me to believe the text, right? Because if I, if I look at the text and it says like, hey, you're COVID positive, and I would be like, no, man, um, I don't agree with this. I uninstall the app and I don't know, I go do something else browse Facebook or whatever, then yes, I was in the hazard, no, wait, then I wasn't in the hazardous situation, right? The hazard was there, the diagnosis was wrong, but um, the hazardous situation didn't really happen in the sense of that I believed this and that I like undertook further measures. So discussing this, it sounds pretty simple and let's put this in words. So the hazardous situation here for me personally, and again, if you ask like 10 risk management people, Maybe they will come up with slightly different things for this example, what really is a hazardous situation, but whatever. For me, hazardous situation here is um, the user, user believes um, the wrong COVID diagnosis. COVID diagnosis, um, i.e., yeah, um, user thinks he, yeah, this is like not super gender neutral, but we're, we're focusing on the regulatory stuff here, right? Uh, user things. Let's let's make it let's make it female. She, she's, um, COVID positive, even though she's healthy, right? Okay, and now you have an intermediate probability between these between these called P one. So that's the probability of this hazard actually leading to this hazardous situation. And it's not one, in my opinion, because if I show a wrong COVID diagnosis to 100 people, I don't think 100 people are going to believe this wrong diagnosis and act upon it. So, but again, then the question is, what is the probability? I don't really know. And this is, this is essentially risk analysis. You don't know, and you're just like estimating things. For me, and for this example, I would put it at 0.1 maybe. So you have, um, so that's 10%. So you could say, okay, if I display a wrong COVID diagnosis and specifically a false positive one to 100 people, maybe 10% would believe it and think like, oh my God, I'm COVID positive. 
and um, yeah, this is serious. Why the other 90 um, people would say like, hmm, maybe this app is crappy, I, I don't believe it. Okay, so we got from the hazard to the hazardous situation. Now the harm, I think we actually had the harm already in our simple table, right? So the harm is, um, well, yeah, in, in this case, the harm is none, right? So um, that, and that's a fair thing to write. So let's, let's copy this. Harm is like none. Um, because again, to refresh our memory here, um, if, if the app tells me I have COVID and I believe this and I'm actually healthy, then I go to, and I go to the hospital to get checked or COVID testing site. And um, they'll check me and they'll say like, hey, you're negative, everything's fine. And there wasn't any real harm. I mean, okay, you could discuss this in for like a thousand hours and say like, yeah, but maybe I could catch COVID while I'm at the testing site because of this, but let's just not go there. Um, so in this case, this is very good because we could, we could essentially say we don't have to analyze this further. So let's gray this, gray this out. Oh, this is, that's very gray. How about less gray? Okay. Because like, yeah, that, there's no harm and that doesn't, that means you don't have to analyze stuff on the right side. <laughs> Simple, right? And, um, but we still need to estimate the intermediate probability here. So what's the probability of a user um, who has, who's already believing the wrong COVID diagnosis actually to go to the hospital to get checked? Maybe, I don't know. Again, I wouldn't say it's 100% again, because maybe out of 100 people, maybe a lot of them would actually stay home and think like, okay, maybe I've got COVID, so I'll just like self-quarantine right now. I'm not getting tested. I don't know, because like, I mean, I wouldn't spend too much time on this because again, the ha there's no harm. So we won't, this, this is not kind of, it doesn't have a con like final effect. So let's just say it's, it's 10% again and whatever. Like this, this whole role, row, the probabilities don't really matter that much because there's no harm in the end anyway. Okay, let's actually do, um, let's do a row which actually has a harm. And maybe the next one is interesting because if we remember, we actually classified this as not acceptable. So that could be interesting. Okay, and we have um, the wrong COVID diagnosis again, but this time it's a false negative diagnosis. And we had this medical impact, which was disease progression, the patient stays at home, but should have gone to the hospital earlier. So just to remember, this was the case where the app says like, hey, you're healthy, but the patient actually has COVID and they would be believing this. They would be like, yay, um, I'm healthy, even though I feel like crap. And um, then they would stay home because they're like, yeah, the app told me I'm healthy. And then maybe COVID, the COVID disease gets worse and they end up in the hospital later. So, um, which maybe decreases their chances of a good treatment because if they had gone there earlier, would have been treated in a better way. <clears throat> so let's copy this. And then this sounds, yeah, this sounds like the harm to me, right? Because harm is always about the medical implications, the medical, the actual medical harm. It always has to be something like a patient gets sick or disease progresses, that sort of stuff, or like you break a bone, that sort of stuff. But it's not like wrong diagnosis or it's not like the app crashes. That, that's not a harm. It doesn't, it's no medical effect. <clears throat> okay, and similar to the first column, we actually have um, a very similar hazardous situation, right? Because like, um, it's the same thing, just <laughs> different. In this case, the app is saying like, hey, you're healthy. And the hazardous situation again would be that the user um, sees this diagnosis and believes it. So we can copy paste the hazardous situation from above. So user believes the wrong COVID diagnosis but user thinks she's COVID negative, even though she's COVID positive, right? COVID positive. Ooh, with a dash. Let's fix this. Okay. And let's just say, hmm, I don't know, maybe it's 10% again. I, I, you can put more thought into this than I did. Um, that's just, you know what the P1 thing means, so let's not discuss it for too long. Okay, and what's the probability of someone actually staying home if, um, if they believe this wrong diagnosis? I don't know. I would say maybe it's like 10% again, just because it's not like 100%. And I would always go in increments of um, in 
factors of 10. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like always, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say like, yeah, it's like 35%. I would always go like 100%, 10%, 1%, 0.1 and so on. Now this is interesting because this is obviously a harm. So we cannot grade this out. And the next column is to actually come up with the total probability. So, and for that, pretty simple, we just multiply the first two probabilities, which is 1%, right? So 10 to the power of minus 2, um, that's 0 0.01, 1%. <laughs> 1%. Okay, now the question could be, okay, so 1% of people who like use this app, they kind of like have disease progression, that sounds like a lot. So, hmm, yeah, so we, ha we, have, we have two things we have to think about here. And again, this is getting complex, but I hope you're still with me. Um, the first thing is the, either the 6304 or the 14971. Anyway, one of these standards states that you should always assume that software bugs have a probability of 100% of happening. So for example, you couldn't argue like, yeah, we're only going to make a wrong COVID diagnosis in like 1% ever because our software is super safe. That's probably something which won't work. So you always have to assume that stuff like wrong COVID diagnoses, if they're based on bugs, that they always have an occurrence probability of 100%. So we wouldn't have a P0 here, which says like, yeah, this already happens so rarely. And then we analyze stuff so, so that you can't do that. So that's... Um, that's the first consideration. The second consideration is, I probably like made a mistake here, right? Because you would, like, it's not like all users are actually COVID positive, right? So if the, if the COVID diagnosis is wrong, well, it would have to be a wrong COVID diagnosis on someone who actually has COVID. So you could actually somehow improve this P1 probability by multiplying it with, um, with the, the occurrence of COVID in a certain area, right? So if, if you say like, maybe in general, only 0.1% of the app users actually have COVID due to, I don't know, the app being used in Germany, and that's just like the epidemiology at that point in time there right now, then probably probably you could like I, I would probably hmm in this app case i would probably <laughs> to contradict myself i would probably introduce a probability on this left side before the hazard and call it like epidemiologic occurrence or so right because like you need to take that into consideration that like um that you somehow have the actual number of covid um, occurrences in an area so you come up with a better probability here. Okay, but that's a side thought. Like this only applies, well, I mean, yeah, this, this applies to like the COVID app for now. And you can come up with something smarter. I hope you can um, after you've understood these videos. But this will take forever if I go down that rabbit hole. So let's just assume that this total probability that that's kind of fine. And then we actually checked our um, risk acceptance matrix at the other time, and we had we classified it as this as S two P four, so S S two P four, and we said it's not acceptable. So we will have to look into this further because it's not easy to <laughs> ship an app which has uh, not acceptable risks. In, in a nutshell, like, yes, you can ship it, but then you have to argue in your, um, for example, risk management report, you have to argue that the benefits outweigh the risks. So you essentially say like, yes, we have risks which are not acceptable and they will kind of like impact patients in a negative way. But our app is so great because it saves so many people and we proved that in the clinical evaluation. So the clinical evaluation is a very important document for that, um, to make that point. And that's why the app in total still has a good like benefit risk ratio. Personally, I would try to like not go there because that's always kind of a very like slippery slope. I would try to argue that you don't have any unacceptable risks. And in the next few videos, we will actually see how we can do that with something called risk control, which is also a concept from the 14971. But for now, let's just say like, yeah, this is not acceptable and we have to look into it further. 
So maybe just to like look at um, look at like one more thing. So um, let's see. I mean, we could do like no diagnosis at all, but there's like it doesn't really have a harm. So how about like user misunderstands UI output of result? Yeah, I think I think that's actually that's actually pretty interesting. Or how about yeah? How about we do these two more? Because I think it cannot hurt to do more examples. So user misunderstands UI input um, UI output of result. Okay. And so that's a usability hazard. And what could that mean? I mean, the most relevant outputs of this app are whether someone has a COVID diagnosis or not. So if they're positive or not. So this essentially could lead to either one of these two, right? So you could say, hmm. Yeah, I mean, you could say, let, let's take the worst. In that case, I would take the worst one. I would take the, the, the second one. The first one doesn't lead to any harm, right? So take the second one, copy paste it. And again, like, so we're looking at this case where a user looks at the app and the app says something like, um, your COVID positive or negative. Or actually in this case, um, the app says like, you're healthy, right? The app says you're healthy, but the user, due to bad usability, the user doesn't understand it and thinks maybe like, that's not true also. Um, and actually we have to flip this around, like, right? So the app would actually say, hey, you're COVID positive. And it would be correct because the user is COVID positive, but the user doesn't understand the app and thinks the user is healthy. And then we have the, the we have the same situation as above. So <laughs> sounds terribly complex, but a good example for this could be um, maybe your usability is so bad that the text is in like tiny letters, or maybe uh, like a positive diagnosis has like a, a green check mark, which looks like to someone who doesn't know like who doesn't read the text which looks to that person like, hey, I'm healthy because it's a green check mark and everything's fine. So that's, that's what this bad usability is all about. So even though your app displays everything kind of correctly, the user misinterprets it and you end up being in the same hazardous situation as above. So um, the user, again, this is a COVID positive user, but the user for some reason thinks the app has told him to, um, that he's healthy. And again, the app could actually say like, hey, you're COVID positive, but the user just didn't get it. And then we actually have like, we have the same situation, right? So, well, you could, okay, you could discuss these probabilities again. I don't know, yeah, we could go there, but that's not. Um, but you have the same end result. You have disease progression um, because the patient stays at home, but should have gone to the hospital. And in this case, everything's, everything is the same here. And again, this is not because you had a bug in your app or because like there was a there was a technical problem. Everything in the app worked as planned, but the user totally didn't get it and just acted upon it as if there would have been other output. And also, as we note, this is not acceptable, so we will have to just look into risk control. But let's do that later. And finally, maybe let's do this one more. So. This IT security problem, backend gets hacked and test output for user gets changed. Okay, by the way, this is not directly a hazard, right? This is this is this is a, a technical problem. So hmm, doesn't really fit here, right? Because this is like this is like not something the app like oh well hmm. And test output gets changed, that actually leads to the first two things. So huh. So we actually discovered something called failure modes, and <laughs> that's a good uh, that's a good point to kind of take a break here and discuss failure modes um, in the next video.